welcome back to the channel family thank you so much for tuning in today my name is paul and peterhead in scotland today we are going to be continuing our journey through the book of isaiah uh, we're in chapter 44 so let's get straight to it and now hear jacob my servant and israel whom i have chosen Thus says Jehovah that made thee and formed thee from the womb, who helpeth thee. Fear thou not, Jacob, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring and they shall spring up among the grass as willows by the water courses one shall say i am jehovah's and another shall call himself by the name of jacob and another shall write with his hand i am jehovah's and surname himself by the name of israel Thus saith Jehovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Jehovah of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it, and set it in order for me? Since I appointed the ancient peoples, and the coming things and those that shall happen, let them declare unto them. Fear thou not, neither be thou afraid. Have I not caused thee to hearken from that time and have declared it, and ye are my witnesses? Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no rock, I know not any. They that form a graven image are all of them vanity. And their delectable things are of no profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know. That they may be ashamed. Who hath formed to God or a molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. And the workmen are but men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. They shall fear. They shall be ashamed together. The ironsmith hath a chisel, and he worketh in the coals. And he fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with his strong arm. But he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He hath not drunk water, and he is faint. The worker in wood stretcheth out a line. He marketh it out with red chalk. He formeth it with sharp tools. And he marketh it out with the compass. And maketh it after the figure of a man. According to the beauty of man. That it may remain in the house. When he heweth him down cedars. He taketh also a holm oak. And a terebinth. He chooseth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth a pine, and the rain maketh it grow. And it shall be for a man to burn, and he taketh thereof, and warmeth himself. He kindleth it also, and baketh bread. He maketh also a god, and worshipeth it. 
make it into graven image and fall us down thereunto. He burn us part thereof in the fire, with part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Yea, he is warm and saith, Aha, I am become warm. I have seen the fire. And with the remainder thereof, he maketh a god, his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshippeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have no knowledge, and understand not. For he that hath plastered their eyes, that they may not see, and their hearts, that they may not understand, and none taketh it to heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding, to say I have burned part of it in the fire, and have also baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it, and with the rest thereof shall I make an abomination? Shall I bow down to a block of wood? He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside. But he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these things, O Yaakov and Yashrael, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant Israel thou shalt not be forgotten of me I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins return unto me for I hath redeemed thee Sing ye heavens, for Yahovah hath done it. Sing ye heavens, for Yahovah hath done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, the forest, and every tree therein. For Yahovah hath redeemed Yaakov and glorified himself in Yashorel. Thus says Yahovah, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am Yahovah, the maker of all things, who alone stretched out the heavens. Who did spread forth the earth by myself. He that frustrateth the tokens of the liars. And maketh diviners mad. That turneth wise men backwards. And makes their knowledge foolish. That confirmeth the word of his servant. And performeth the counsel of his messengers. That saith to Yerushalayim, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Yahuda, you shall be built up. And I will raise up their ruins that saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd. And he shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Yerushalayim, Thou shalt be built. And to the temple, Thy foundation shall be laid.
it's a very strong chapter, friends. This powerful chapter. And now hear, Yaakov, my servant, and Yasharel, whom I have chosen. So that's the first man and the second man. That's all mankind is to hear. So that is the creation that came about by the word of God and is sustained by the word of God. And though all the life therein is the word of God, is to hear the word of God. And it speaks of the unsaved and the saved, the unregenerate and the regenerate, Adam and Christ, King Saul, King David, Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul, the first man of the earth earthly, the second man, the Lord from heaven. Here, Yaakov my servant, and Yasharel, whom I have chosen. So once again, we have the uh, the voice to all flesh in the previous chapter there. And if you look at the screen in Isaiah 43, verse 1, but now thus says Yahovah that created thee, O Yaakov, and he that formed thee, O Yasharel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, Thou art mine. Now, that is to all mankind. All mankind is a possession of Elohim Yahweh, and all mankind is a possession of Yeshua Hamashiach. And the word is, do not fear, for I have redeemed thee. So it's all the hope and blessings of redemption. Everything is redeemed, deemed in a fresh way through the blood atonement. Everything, all mankind is deemed afresh. Of course, um, everything centers in the Lord Jesus Christ turn very quickly to uh, Isaiah 9, the deity of Christ, the sovereignty of Christ, the personage of Christ, is it ought to occupy the hearts and minds of all believers. If you look at uh, verse, five, verse 6, Isaiah 9, 6, um, is a very good memory verse here, can us? For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name is called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Father of Eternity, the Prince of Peace. So that tells you very, very, very clearly that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Ancient of Days, the Father of Eternity, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, and the Prince of Peace. Friends, you ought to make it one of your occupations to study the deity of Christ, that Christ is God. Now, so the voice of God is to all creation. This is the kingdom of God, which is over all mankind right now. This is the word of God that is over all mankind right now. Now, one speaks of the Father, the Lord God Omnipotent. Two speaks of the Son of God, God of God, deity incarnate. Three speaks of the Holy Spirit, the sevenfold spirit spoken of in Isaiah 11, verse 1, um, and Revelation 1. The uh, four horses, the four chariots that come out from between the two mountains of brass in Zechariah 6 that are the first four seals of Revelation 6. Um, 
the idea is the four chariots coming out between the two mountains. That's the unity of purpose of the father and the son. So verse one is God Almighty, deity in absolute form, the father here, Yaakov, my servant and Yashriel, whom I have chosen. I would suggest that would be a companion verse of uh, hear you him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And verse two would be, uh, would speak of the son of God very clearly. If you look at the screen friends, thus says Jehovah that made you and formed thee from the womb. Christ always being being in view to rule over all creation. Uh, one man. He formed thee from the womb who helpeth thee. Fear not, Yaakov, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen. Now, Yesha, as I've said before, Yesha, Yesha uh, means upright. Yesha El is upright God. It is a title and description of the personage of Christ Jesus, Yesha El, upright God. And Yesha Un means virtually the same as uh, Yesha El, Israel. It's, it's just a slightly different term. Uh, Ending to the word, well, well, Yesha or Yasha means upright. Um, similarly, you've got Yeshua, which is salvation. Yesha uh, is upright, and Yesha El uh, is Christ Jesus, and it's also where we get the modern Israel from Yesha El, Israel, Israel, you see. And um, Yesharun is a compound word of Yesha. And the un refers to one. And ironically enough, uh, un is the French for one. Um, <clears throat> the spice is uno. So yesherun is upright one. <clears throat> I don't believe you get the word yesherun in many places in scripture. Yes, four places. Four places. Deuteronomy 32, 15. Then Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. Your wax and fat grown thick. You covered with fatness. He gave up God. That's L in the singular. With the, Oh, no, no. It's L-O-R with the cross in front of it. He gave up L-O-R who made him. So that infers that mankind grieved the divine nature very much. The spirit of God. L-O-R. The three words for God in the Hebrew Old Testament are El, Elohim or Eloah uh, and if you look at I don't know if it'll highlight no it won't but if you look at the screen there friends you can see how it's got there God with a cross in front of it uh, and that is how Mr. Darby shows almost uniquely in the translations I think which word for God is there in the Hebrew? And there's just the three. If, if it doesn't have any denotation in front of the word God, it's simply Elohim, which is God in plurality and fullness. If it's got a tiny dot in front of it, um, it, it is God in the singular, simply El or Al. Um, but if it's got a little cross in front of it, it's Eloah, Eloah, uh, which speaks of God in the spirit. The spirit of God, all three are deity, all three are God, but uh, slight uh, nuances to, to explain the character and nature and application of the personage of God uh, in the particular scriptures that we are looking at. So the four mentions of Jeshurun, um, three in Deuteronomy, once in Isaiah. So you see, friends, and it's Isaiah 44 to um, the verse that we're in just now um, and then 
of course, um, it, the, the the first mention in Deuteronomy is uh, Yeshurun as a child or uh, Israel as a child, it refers to. It's, it's a very precious thing. I would suggest it's the actual, well, it's, it's the personification of Jesus Christ um, as opposed to the nation of Israel and all the mortals. It's, it's really a, well, as is as is Yashirel, as is as is Yashirel Israel, uh, but Yeshurun would definitely speak of the person of Christ Jesus incarnate. Um, whereas Yeshurel does speak of Christ incarnate, but it also speaks particularly of the nation. So this is a particular precious uh, and rare, a somewhat obscure reference to to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and then, so you, you go from Yeshurun in the first verse, 32, 15, and then you you have uh, a person being king in Yeshurun, which is very interesting. So that speaks of the sovereignty of the father through the son. Uh, and then you have this title, the God of Yeshurun. And that is completely unique in the whole of the Bible, that title. And there it is in Deuteronomy 33, 26. There is nobody like unto the God of Yeshurun, who rides upon the heavens to your help, mankind, and his majesty upon the clouds. So, so two um, is a very, very special verse of scripture. Um, and in the first verse, it's Jacob and Israel that's in view. In the second verse, it's Jacob uh, and Yeshurun. So it's Yaakov and Yeshurel in verse 1, and Yaakov and Yeshurun in verse 2. And verse 3 speaks of the Holy Spirit. Uh, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. This is very much a parallel scripture to Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. The answer of the tongue is from Yahovah. All creation will serve, honor, obey, worship. Eloha Yahovah. Eloha is the life in all mankind. Yea, even upon the bondmen and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and upon the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be changed to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of Jehovah come up. And it shall be that whosoever shall call upon the name of Jehovah shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Yerushalayim shall be deliverance, as Yahweh has said, for the residue whom Yahweh shall call so that's joel 2 32 friends and um yes it, that is that that appears thrice um the clear clear statement that whoever shall call upon the name of yahovah whoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved um 
and, and that does appear in, in the book of Acts and the book of uh, Romans. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. They shall spring up among the grass as willows by the water courses. Now, um, things that spring up among the grass and willows by the water courses, it's just a natural outflowing of life. Um, men do not need to go and do anything to produce these things. Um, the, everything is divinely sustained. Um, it's the idea of fruition, completion, sufficiency, and entirety as a natural outworking of the will of Eloha Yahweh, um, divine purposes in full expression, the whole counsels of God Almighty. All through the atonement, all through the death of Christ, of course. One shall say, I am Jehovah's, <clears throat> and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall write with his hand, I am Jehovah's, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Now, this is a very special and a very interesting verse that one could talk on for several hours. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Yes. So the first half of the verse, um, well, there's three, there's three persons in view. There's one that simply says, I am Jehovah's, or I am Yahweh's. Uh, and then there's another one uh, that says, well, I'm from Yaakov. That's uh, the natural lineage, you see. And another shall write with his hand, I am Yahovah's, and surname himself by the name of Yeshurel. So there's three persons in view in that one verse. Very interesting. So I would say that speaks of persons of human beings that say they belong to Yahovah. So that would be um, believing, you could say, religious or practicing Jews. Uh, perhaps persons that attend synagogues and, and many persons that do not attend synagogues, practicing Jews that read the what we call the Old Testament, that read the Torah, uh, the poetic books, the history uh, and the prophets. Um, and then there are those that simply say, oh, I'm Jewish. So that would be natural patronage. You see, they would say, oh, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm Jewish. You know, they would think that as being enough to give them blessing. Um, that which is natural. You see, and then you have this third person in verse five that actually writes with his hand, I am Yahovah's and surnames himself by the name of Yeshurel. So that's very, very, very interesting. So this third person, when you write something with your hand, friends, uh, it is uh, clearly written. Um, it's very interesting. I suppose it speaks in the book of Acts of the disciples of Christ Jesus, who it says they went forth for the sake of the name. I believe it only appears twice in scripture, one in the, the letters of John and once in the book of Acts. They went forth for the sake of the name of Jesus. Well, it doesn't actually say the name of Jesus Christ. It says they went forth for the sake of the name on account of the name. And it's the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Uh, the name of Yahweh.
So it's, it's very, very interesting um, because it's the name of the upright God. So they write with the hand that they belong to Yahovah and surname themselves by the name of Yeshurel. So that's subjection uh, and obedience, you see. I suppose it would speak of a Christian that's very, very happy to be identified with Israel, which is appropriate since uh, salvation is of the Yehudis and that Christ is Jewish and the king of the Jews, the Jew of the morning, out of the tomb. Thus says Yahovah, Melech HaYeshurel, Thus says Yahovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahovah of armies, I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. No. That's all mankind needs to be concerned with, and it's number six. Thus says Yahovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahovah of armies. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. It's a great memory verse, friends. You would do well to remember that verse. Now, that would be a parallel verse with, let us see. Revelation 117. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And the living one, I became dead, and behold, I am living to the ages of ages. And I have here the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Yes, so I've just put in there first and last, friends, 30 results in the scriptures. Um, you have David first and last, Solomon first and last, Rehoboam first and last, Asar first and last, Jehoshaphat, Amaziah, Uzziah first and last, referred to the kings, you see. And it means that what they did uh, first and last, so everything that they did, their whole history and chronology uh, and works. See? Now, there's our chapter that we're in today. Oh, no, there's the first mention in Isaiah 414. You see? Who has wrote and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, Yahweh, the first and with the last, I am he. And the Ivri, the Hebrew, uh, for that is Harishon Vaha Akaron. I am the first and I am the last. Harishon Vaha Akaron. And then, of course, this is our chapter today, 44 6. Uh, thus says Yahovah, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, Yahovah of armies, I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. And then it appears for a third time in the book of Isaiah 
uh, which we'll come to in a few days. Hearken unto me, Yaakov, and thou, Yeshurel, my called, I am he. Uh, yeah. I, the first, and I, the last. Now, and of course, in Matthew 19, many first shall be last and last first. Thus shall the last be first and the first last for many are called, but few are chosen. And then we've just read that in Revelation 117. Um, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And in Revelation 2.8, these things says the first and the last who became dead and lived. And then Revelation 22, 13, 2, 2, 1, 3. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I am Aleph Vahatav, Rishon Ev Akaron. Now. So there you have it, friends. Who as I shall call and shall declare it, set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient peoples and the coming things and those that shall happen. Let them declare to them. So that's verse seven, you see, completion, entirety. So it's the voice of heaven, you see. Uh, who like me shall call and shall declare it? Who's going to set things in order for me since I appointed all mankind? And what's going to happen to mankind? Everything's going to happen. Let mankind tell me what's going to happen. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what's going to happen. That's the order of things. You are all creature subjects. You want to know what's going to happen? Spend an hour or two in the scriptures every day without fail. The secret of Yahweh is with those that revere him. And those that revere him read the scriptures and read the scriptures aloud and declare the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis. Nay, several times a day basis. You want to stay out of the delusion and the voice of, and wiles of the vile devile. Stay in the word of God. Be honourable to his majesty, Elohai, Yahweh, and all will to be well. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Have I not caused you to hear from that time and have declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there an Eloah, a God, besides me? Yea, there is no rock. I know not any. It's a great verse. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Haven't I caused you to hear from that time and have declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there an Eloah besides me? Yep, there is no rock. I know not any. So Elohai Yehovah being the creator has caused every, every peace, every bit of peace, every joy, uh, every gladness of heart, every good experience, every atom, neutron, proton, and nuclei uh, is by the grace of Elohai Yahweh. Elohai Yahweh has given ears to hear, eyes to see, um, 
tongues to talk. The lip of truth is established forever, but the lying tongue shall be cut out. Uh, we are to speak prudently and wisely. All flesh will need to learn to speak properly again. Because of the curse, mortals do not speak properly. Um, so the high Yahweh has caused men to be able to hear and has, and has declared it, spoken forth creation. Uh, one is sustaining all creation right now. All things are sustained in benevolence, uh, loving kindness right now. You're hearkening to this. It's by grace and mercy alone. Now, these next few verses speak of the cross of Jesus Christ and also of idolatry uh, and vanity. Now, if you look closely from verse 9, where are we? Book 2. Um, it's quite a quite a bit quite a bit of it. Nine to nineteen, that's ten verses, friends, is a is a different sort of portion. This this twenty eight verse chapter, Yeshia. Um, 44 is well it's in it's in three three portions I suppose you could say uh, and this portion is very very interesting Let, let's take a look through it tells you clearly in verse 9 that mortals that form a graven image are all of them vanity. So men that make idols and practice idolatry uh, are vanity. So these are solemn things here, Kenneth. I don't say these things for fun. These are solemn, immutable realities throughout this whole planet, throughout every human being. If you practice idolatry, to some degree, you'll be a vain person. Right. And a vain person uh, it means that all, all that's le left for you is, 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 is an empty tomb, really. It means that, uh, you know, you're not out of the tomb with Christ. You're something that happened um, through which the blood flowed. You're a vain person. Um, and very likely you, you view the death of Christ as a small thing all mortals have is the death and the atonement and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ and all mortals doth need is the atoning finished work of the triumphant eternal redeemer the Christ God, even Jesus, your Lord. So, yes, persons that form a graven image, well, in the modern era, friends, well, not a lot of you went to other countries, I suppose. If you go to many countries in Africa and Asia, um, they do actually make graven images. I mean, in Britain, it's a little bit more subtle, I suppose. You you know, you do have uh, you do have quite a, bit, a lot of people that do painting in their own homes. You know, they they paint things. They're forever painting pictures, and then they frame them or put them on the wall. Or if they can get anyone in to give them gold or silver for them, they sell them. That's the idea, I suppose. Um, and then it, I suppose, as well, it's the idea of that which is external, that which is seen. Um, I suppose the, the next thing that's similar is fancy clothing, persons that wear fancy clothing and think it gives them status, you know, all these brands and uh, things like that. That would be a similar thing. And also, I think another very similar thing is persons that, that buy expensive fancy cars and they're forever washing them and polishing them and keeping them spotless. That's a form of idolatry. Not that there's anything wrong with having a car. 
but that's a similar kind of thing. Um, you know, they, they feel better because they have a nice car, you see, um, or a nice home. That would be a similar thing. Oh, look at my home, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, you know, it's two bathrooms. and Oh, yes, four bedrooms. And oh, yes, we've got this underfloor heating, you know. We've, we've got a, a porch at the back. Oh, yes, we've got a lovely garden, you know. Oh, yes, the latest things. Well, if they don't honour the Lord Jesus Christ who died and rose again, if they do not have honour and deference and worship and reverence, then they may well have eternal darkness as their portion. Their delectable things are of no profit. You see, it's the end of the world as men and devils know it. That's what this is. It's over. Benito. No longer the rule of mortals. No longer the rule of devils. But the rule of Elohayayi Yawa, your maker. Ye are all my possessions, says Yawa. You are all my children. Now, it's a great verse because it tells you that persons that worship possessions are actually vanity themselves. So the irony is that they think they're very fulfilled by their possessions, but actually the fact that they review their possessions means that they themselves are empty possessions of Elohaiyawa, which means they're not being fooled by the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit who sang to the Heilige Gagaishta. They're not filled with the Ruach HaYavua, the Ruach HaYahushua, the Holy Ghost. They are vain. Now, they are weather vain. They are blown here and there with all kinds of false teachings and fear of men and the world and the flesh. They live in the thoughts of men's flesh. They are worldly. They are here and there. They're not established and rooted and grounded and founded in the Christ God. They are vain. Vain persons. And their delectable things are of no profit. And they are their own witnesses. So the, these are solemn spiritual realities, friends, that one could talk on for quite some time. Um, we're going to have to do this broadcast in two parts. I'll try and come back later. Um, I like to try and cover a chapter in a day, not over two days. I'll try and come back later. Um, and, and record part two. <clears throat> but this, this verse here, Isaiah 44, 9, declares very clearly the condition of mankind, that they worship that which is outward, uh, that which is created rather than the creature. And if they're not worshipping the creature, they create things to worship, such as cars, homes, televisions, um, furniture, clothing, um, they like to dress up their family members in fancy clothing and sometimes buy them idols as well. And they don't realize that they themselves are then vain, which means they're empty and fruitless uh, and devoid of the spirit of God. Uh, and all their precious possessions are, are of no profit. You can't buy eternal life. You can't purchase the gift of God. They do not see, nor do they know. It's, uh, it's, it's the delusion, you see. Such persons are under the delusion because they've already rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, the one you love. They've already chosen the darkness. They're already continuing their allegiance with the devil. They're already on their way to the pit.
there it is. They have no knowledge, they understand not, for he hath plastered their eyes that they may not see, and their hearts that they may not understand. That's the reality of the curse, the delusion that's on the earth. Uh, they are on the hearth, ready to go into the fire. Instead of in the second man, the Lord from heaven, his majesty, King Jesus. The rock of ages. They don't know, you see. They don't understand because God has plastered their eyes that they may not see. They think they see, but they do not see Jesus. It says in the wonderful book of Hebrews, uh, but now we see Jesus exalted above all. Uh, so their hearts and their eyes are plastered that they might not understand. They are their own witnesses. Think of that, friends, on that day when all the dead and the living stand before the throne of Elohai Yehovah and the books are opened and the dead are judged out of the things in the books. They are their own witnesses. What will they have to say, friends? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, there's nothing to say. And there's no one to speak for them. They didn't speak for Jesus Christ. They didn't declare the honor and the glory of Elohai Yabawah. They were thieves and robbers, wanting that which is formed without giving worship to him that formed all things, without being thankful and worshipful and reverential. They are their own witnesses. They do not see, nor do they know. Terrible thing, friends. It all has to do with the curse. Hath God said, is there a word of God? Is there a voice of God? Is there a mind of God, a purpose of God? Hath God said, we see in these last days, friends, there are men upon earth that say they don't believe there's a devil. Think about that. Nor do they say there is a God. That's the extent of delusion upon the earth when the very, very life in these creatures that say such things is God, is Elohim, Yehovah. That's the reality, the solemnity of the curse and the delusion here, can us. The first man born on this planet was a murderer, Cain, and he murdered his brother, Abel. The first man born on the planet murdered the second man born on the planet. That's the reality of the curse, friends. And the greatness of Christ saved a dying thief on the tree next to him, on the cross next to him. This day you shall be with me in paradise. Lord, remember thou me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Don't worry or be afraid. I have caused you to hear from that time and have declared it. Ye are my witnesses. Is there an Eloah besides me? Yea, there is no rock. I know not any. They will be ashamed. All those mortals that rejoice in possessions and outward things <clears throat> will be ashamed. They're their own witnesses that they are vain persons. Who has formed a God or a molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. And the workmen are but men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. They shall fear. They shall be ashamed together. Well, beloved here, can us, um, I'll try and come back later with part two. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it's a pleasure to share with you. And uh, it's uh, a very um, powerful book of scripture. I would commend your study of it.
in between broadcasts by all means friends um, do do study these chapters of scripture um and we will be back soon with another broadcast so until next time family shalom shalom